start out with the uh, gear green pack. And what you see that you liked out of that? Are, are there things that you can expand upon that he can do more of? What you think? Sure. I think, um, you know, as a staff, we're all um, – you're just finding ways to keep on, finding ways for our guys to gain yards, gain confidence, and keep um, finding ways to improve it. So what Garrett has done is just allowed us to, to have a different way to attack people. Um, so I think you'll definitely see the growth without going into detail what that will be. Um, but there will be growth in it. Um, it. It changes who we are and allows us to be, to be different in the way we need to be at, at that position. Um, I think it complements uh, us very well um, in using the two-quarterback package. So it's been good for us, and it will be something we'll have to grow upon as people begin to, to game plan for it. So we'll grow with it as well and try to stay in front of it. So along those lines, there's a situational value to having what Jarrett does well and what Garrett does well. But from a game planning perspective, taking occupying the time to have to prepare for both of those guys, is there a value in that as well? I think there is. So then the discussion would be then, John, that we're, we're doing what some defenses do when they become multiple, right? We have to, if we have to prepare for multiple fronts, right? Or movement and those things, well, now they're having to spend some time on some things too. Um, so I think there is great merit in it. We do as a staff, and, and as long as we don't get outside of his wheelhouse, it allows us to do some things that, that again, and, and what you said situationally, you know, if we execute – at the end of the football game last week, you saw that that would have been really well for us to find an extra hat and do some things. And if we if we get that execution stepped up, it's going to allow us to maybe finish that game in four minutes instead of making it so uh, help them. We were helping with TV ratings. Well, you know, you only have so much time. This isn't the NFL. Um, you only got so much time to prepare. So, you, you know what I mean? You can only – what do you pick and choose what you do? Yeah, be careful. You know, it's like it, we've said in – Past weeks, I think it's important for us to make our plays work. And like anything, we're, we're sitting here as coaches and players. We're all trying to do our best, put our best foot forward, to put our guys in the best position to be successful, but also then be able to run our offense, do the things our guys know how to do, the things that they have worked tirelessly on to, to improve from January till now. So it's, the, it's a careful balance of the two. And, and we're managing that, um, but we've got to continue to, to keep our foot on the, gra the gas too to make sure our guys grow the right way and, and push them to, to find space in our run game and pass game. Your run game showed much better numbers. What uh, what'd you think of your offensive line? What were their improvements? Yeah, you know what? And we've talked about it before as a staff, and I've said it to you guys in here. I think you got to be careful about always tying everything to results. You know, I think the truth lies in the work. And so, although it probably wasn't what we wanted the first two weeks, we'd been practicing in a way and changing who we wanted to be and becoming more physical and changing these habits throughout the week. So our best two practices last week were on Tuesday and Wednesday. Our most physical practices were Tuesday and Wednesday. So is it a result of that work that pops the second play of the game? You don't know, but you know it gives us the best chance. You know what I mean? Um, so those stats, if that run doesn't happen, some would say, well, you didn't have those yards. I love that in sports, right? Or you wouldn't hit that. Well, we did. You know what I mean? Those things, they have to happen that got the game going for us. And we're, we're um, and becoming an explosive offense, in my opinion, in our opinions, and, and having 20, the 20-play 20 um, drives or the 20-play um, plays – whether it be run or pass, are important to being explosive as an offense. It's a direct correlation to scoring points in a drive. We've got to continue to find those ways and then sustain them. Um, but the, the work is certainly correlated through the week's practice last week, and we're going to have to do it again. It's like I told the guys on Monday morning, to sustain this, we're going to have to do it again. Then we're going to come back here next week and talk about the fact that we need to do it again. And you just the truth lies in the work of it all. Is it tougher to call plays when you've got a big lead and you know you're – Reducing the game, and you're, you know there's a limited amount of possessions left. Is it tougher to do that sometimes? It's a good question. Um, it's um, as me, me and Neil do this thing together, and as you do that, you certainly can't help. I think all of us that that know and have been through it all, you certainly couldn't help to feel the pulse of that game, right? So if we finish that sucker and finish the play at halftime, coming right out of the half, and you go to 31. I think everybody can do that math and look up there and feel really good about where it is and not be greedy, right? And when we didn't finish that one, then we stalled out a little bit and kind of then got into a place where we hurt ourselves with the ball security. You know, it flipped a little bit on us in the fourth quarter. 
So it, it gets tricky. You can't, you know, that's giving you an honest answer of there's things you still got to do to be aggressive, but at the same time, you know, there's there's a, a smart element of this thing to make sure we get out of here and do what everybody wanted, which was win a huge rivalry game and let our guys sing the song. In the entire Oklahoma series between these two teams, only one game, I think, the winning team didn't score 45 points. What's it like to go into a game thinking you might have to score 45 before the, <laughs> the, the, the How about the that? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, we we know certainly what we're flying out to go do. Um, we know that they've scored a high level of points and put up a ton of production. That side will let the defense and Jordan those guys worry about. On our side of things, we know we've got a job to do to keep ourselves in the game to where we find a way to score one more than them. So, um, huge, huge deal. Um, it's a great challenge for us as a full football team. And not dodging the question, you know, statistics are proof of – of future and past outcomes and those things. But at the same time, we just know, hey, what, what do we got to do to put ourselves in the best position to be in this game and find a way to finish it in the fourth? And that's that's been our biggest uh, push in game planning so far. What effect does not playing them last year have on this week, if any, your game plan? Um, you know what, Pro I would like to say I don't I don't think that much just in respect as we we did uh, you know we had two weeks to game plan just as they did for us we we game plan for two weeks um, so they've got a good feel for us I'm sure from their their work they'd put in at the end of the year and and so do we and in, in our work and the stuff that we saved as well so you still got a got a, a week and and then another week after the postponed one to game plan so although you didn't get to go out there and do it you still game plan for it so it helped us as coaches maybe as a starting point. And then, of course, every year is different. So much has changed, and we have to adapt to that as well. Jared, it was said that I um, had to score more touchdowns in the red zone. And I was thinking about possession at the end of the first half. You probably think it had three good plays out of but just circumstances, the snap, the time flows perfect. Um, could that have been different outcomes? And then, as you mentioned, statistics can deceive a little bit. Does that frustrate you when you think about how it could have been, it should have been, it would have been? That, that one does. Like, that's that, that three-play set in in my mind, you know what I mean? Like, I think that three-play set um, bothers you. You know, and then, of course, you always want to score more touchdowns, like Coach Brown said. And, of course, then you're skewed. By, that's, again, you can't tie it all to results. What happened in our low percentage, two in game two, we had two fumbles when we had our young guys out there that affected our red zone percentage. So, not always does it tell the truth. Um, but, at the same time, man, we needed to finish that one and, and not kick the field goal and get that thing finished. And we've got to push our guys to make sure we're thinking of a scoring mentality of touchdowns rather than field goals. That's a four-point swing. That sequence, I mean, they moving forward because the snap is kind of a rare thing. And the, I don't know what happened on that list, but that's not an every down occurrence. Does it have value to move forward? Do you just throw that aside? Or do you keep those plays across them out moving forward? Yeah, I mean, there's some that you specialize to, to put in, in specific looks that they had for us. And then some we've got to keep as, as I said earlier, they're, they're plays that we have to make work and stuff that we hang our hat on. So it's a little bit of both. Some you push away and let go, and some you just chalk up to, ah, you know, we've got to be better type type plays and make them work. Curious, your, your philosophy, and this is just a general question, it seems a little counterintuitive. And this is modern football. You get to the goal line, you're first in goal with the two and you're in a shotgun. So you're really first in, what, four or five where you line up? You had a little counterintuitive to be in the gun all the time. I know it hurt Virginia Tech in the game Saturday. That's all they were were in the gun. Yeah, it affected it, and, and it's also a reason why outside of our season growth was to be under center more. You saw us get under center and run and be very effective in the run game, especially Saturday. So, And then you put together this game plan and feel good about it and things don't go that way. It'll make you – you go back and forth on it, right? Are there merits to being under center at that point when you get the ball to the two-yard two line and, and punch it through and be right up there, Hubbard? Of course there are. You know, is there merit in sticking to the plays we game plan and the things we do more than being under center? Of course, you know. And so goes life when you don't have the, the success you should have or finishing that thing with a touchdown. And we'll look at all of it and make sure we put our guys in the best spot to be successful. But it has been while we've grown our under center package, and we will. And everybody's in this game. Yeah. I mean, that's the modern game today. Yeah. I mean, some will refuse even. I mean, there's, there's certain people that refuse to even get under center because they are predominantly gun and they don't want to have any issues even to take a victory snap, you know. And, and so it's, it's all just personal belief, staff belief. Um, I'm sure glad that we, we've chosen to grow that package and it will help us moving forward. If I'm wrong, 
right before the end of the half when you didn't get the when you got the field goal, were there two bad snaps in that sequence there that caused the passes? Well, there was one. The first one there certainly was um, that that affected it. So we essentially just had to take care of the ball, get it get it away. Yeah, and then you know we were you know in the second play we were rushed a little bit. We had a nice RPO on with it that kind of gave a false look. Probably should have handled it better um, at quarterback and not flushed out. But at the same time, it's still a tough look um, and, and a look that they had a good good look for us against. What did you think of Will Hoffman? And what's he adding him back to the package? What's that give you? Well, I've told you guys, and, and it was good. First, it was good to have him back out there. And, and as I've told you all, I, you know, it's good to have a starter there who's a guy that's worked his tail off and had a great off season. And I told Mike, and, and I know Coach Trickett has, has talked to him since the game, you know, your biggest growth in, in offensive football and as a football team, in our opinion, it would be that game one to two and some things you got to know you got to fix because what the film had told you. And so for Mike, it was his first game. So although Mike statistically didn't grade out great yet, his biggest growth this year is going to be from game one to game two because now he's got video evidence of what he did, when it really mattered, and now he can take that next big step, which in week two should be a big step for him based on his preparation. Question about Oklahoma's defense. Um, when you hear about Oklahoma, it's always their offense. Do you think that gets lost a little bit, how well they played defensively the last couple of years? I do. They're, um, you know, they do a great job. They've done a great job recruiting personnel. They're disruptive up front in all ways you could be disruptive. Pass rush and run stunts, the movement they put together. Um, their back end guys are talented, gifted, and can run. Uh, they play really, really hard. Um, so uh, I've said it before and, and say it now, right? What better compliment can you give a group that's well wired up, uh, sound in what they do by scheme, which is a compliment to their coaching staff and how hard they play.